I'm Satin Brownie and this is Finding Happy Podcast. Finding Happy Podcast is my journey to discovering my own happiness through conversations with other persons who inspire me in one way or another. This podcast is about connecting with self to create possibilities and opportunities for happiness. You deserve peace of mind. You deserve wellness. You deserve laughter. You deserve to smile. You deserve peace of mind. You deserve calm in your world. Your life isn't happening to you. You are life. Your happiness is not something you attain. You are. You generate happiness. You are your joy. You are the producer of your joy. You are the producer of your happiness. You deserve to be happy. So you go find it. Go find your happy at any cost. Risk it all for your own happiness. Find your happy. Thank you for joining me on uh, season two of Finding Happy Podcast. I am so thrilled. I'm so excited. I'm so inspired and motivated. Um, I never knew I would get this far. I started talking because I felt compelled to, to just share my story and share my journey to finding my own happiness. And here we are, 13 episodes later, I'm doing episode, um, season two, and I'm so, I'm so pumped about it, right? It's fantastic. In season two, for all, th- we're going to be having 13 episodes and for all 13 episodes we're going to be talking about relationships we're going to be talking about your relationship with yourself we're going to talk about your relationship with parents how parental um how how does your parenting impact your child's ability to have great relationships we're going to be talking about um singles and married people and people who've been divorced and just different and, and and work relationships career development relationships we're going to we're going to be looking at relationships from all different angles and listen if you'd like me to cover a topic or look at a topic at a certain angle please talk to me tell me leave it in the comment section tell me what it is you'd like me to speak about and if you have an interest into who you'd like me to have a conversation with please share it with me in the comment section and i will do my and i will do my very best to get that person on if i can and if i can't i'll do the next best thing and get the next best person for it um so please join me stay with me Um, Let's have these conversations. Let's be empowered. Let's find our happy and let's live this life the way we were intended to. Today, the first podcast I'm going to be having is um, going to be focusing on cultivating a relationship with yourself because you have to begin with you. You deserve happiness. Embrace it. Let's, Let's do this thing. Yes. Thank you so much for joining me for Finding Happy Podcast Season 2. It's December 6th. And it is an amazing, fantastic day. I'm sitting, looking at the sunrise. Um, I love, it is so cold where I am now that when I feel the sun rays on my body, it's like, it's like a blanket. (laughs) And I love it. Uh, This month is a very special month for me. It's my favorite time of year. It's the coldest time of year. And that's one of the reasons I love it so much because I love I love wet weather, cold weather, things like that. Um, I love it. Absolutely love it. And so I'm looking forward to this month. I'm looking forward to having a fantastic time. Um, I know for many persons, you'll be celebrating or observing Christmas time. Um, I don't celebrate Christmas, but I certainly appreciate um, the practice and, and the whole family life um, observance celebrations that usually take place. It's it's such a. I I, I usually um, witness such warmth and kindness and generosity towards people uh, um, around this time, and so I really, really, really love it. Today I have a very special person that will be joining me for my conversation on today's podcast, Finding Happy. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this, nothing happens by accident. Absolutely nothing happens by accident. I remember promoting that my book would be released in, on December 22nd this year, Finding Happy, Avoid Mistakes, Pitfalls, and Career Suicide. And I had all intentions of publishing it this month. And it, the book is actually completed, and it is, it is ready, but I'm not ready. 
And so, let me tell you something about how amazing my God is. Because I know it's him. I saw, I got a, um, a response to one of, I think it was my Insta Instagram posts, where um, this author, his name is Chad Keneller. He shared with me on one of my posts a link to his book. Guess what that book is called? Finding Happy. So I'm not able to share my book with you as I had planned this year because I am personally just not ready yet to, to put it out there. I'm not there yet, and I don't want to do it before I am personally ready. But here we have a book with the same title, the very same title. This is the book I was supposed to introduce you to this month, okay? This is the book. And I'm telling you, it is a powerful, it's a powerful book, a very powerful book. And we're going to have a conversation about it. And you're, you're going to be able to hear from the author himself what his thoughts are, um, why he wrote the book, and, and you'll get some insight into the, the, the kind of principles and guidelines that are in there. I think it's a, I mean, it couldn't have gone any better. And for that, I am so thankful. I am so very thankful. And I would like to ch uh, thank Chad and his, his family and his wife for allowing me to have this conversation with them. And, and he was just lovely. I mean, just absolutely lovely. And I feel so blessed because my guests, all my guests so far, they've just been phenomenal. They've been open, they've been warm, they've been giving, and, and their stories are so powerful, you know? And I'm just hoping that as you listen to this podcast, that you become empowered, that you become inspired, that you become in love with who you are. And when I say in love with who you are, I don't mean narcissistic. I'm saying just, just get to know who you are and love who you are so that you can, you can be who you're meant to be. So you can find your happy. You deserve happiness. You, you deserve joy and peace of mind and, and, and feeling amazing. You deserve kindness and, and, and you deserve hugs and loves and kisses and, and mushy stuff, you know, because when God created you, he said he, he, it was good. He was satisfied. He was, he was happy with the end product. So know how phenomenal you are. Today's topic is cultivating a strong, healthy relationship with self. Cultivating a strong, healthy relationship with yourself. And I'm telling you, if you understand the value of knowing yourself, you won't find true love until you know yourself. You won't find your best job until you know yourself. You won't find, be able to connect with the best people for you until you know yourself. And if you want to learn who you are, I promise you, Finding Happy, this book by Chad Keneller is one of those books that you actually can use. I love when he said in it, um, Finding Happy, it's like climbing a mountain. It has its highs and its lows, right? It peaks and its valleys. And, but he's been there. And so he, he's happy to offer himself as a tour guide for you to help you avoid, avoid some of the pitfalls, you know? Um, this is something I believe. I believe that I'm going to make mistakes and I, I look forward to those mistakes because my, my story has to be made. But you know what I wish for, for you listening to this podcast? I wish that you don't have to make the mistake that people like Chad made because you don't have to because he's here telling you how to avoid it. So you can get his book at findinghappybook.com, but we're going to talk about it some more and you'll learn the other places where you're going to be able to access it. On January 1, it's going to be available on Amazon. Really powerful conversation. Please stay with us. Stay for the full conversation. You can listen while you're doing other things. But I, I really, my, my desire is that you become inspired and empowered and, and so you can thrive in your life. You did not, you were not created to merely get by. You were created to be to live in joy. That's why the Bible says, "Make a joyful noise unto the Lord." And no, this is not a religious podcast, 
but um, the Bible is our reference. And most of those great books and inspirational books that you see, they're based, their their foundation is from the Bible. So it's one. The Bible is one of the books that I read. It's one of the books that are important to me. So from time to time, I refer to it. Right. Um, so thank you so much for listening. Stay with us. And um, here we go. Welcome, Chad, to Finding Happy Podcast. And thank you so much for writing your book. Mm-hmm. Very yeah. pleased to meet you. Please tell us a little about yourself. Well, you know, I, I kind of had this epiphany recently because I, mm-hmm. I recently turned 45. And mm-hmm. um, so I look at my life now as, a, as going through three chapters. So, mm-hmm. you know, maybe I have seven or eight chapters in my life if I look at it as every 15 years. So uh, for me... The first 15 years were pretty good. I mean, I I, uh, had good parents and grew up in a a safe place and had good friends and and all that. And my life seemed pretty normal the first 15 years. But then from age 16 to age 30, those years were really rough. Um, I I went, by the the time that 15-year period was over, I had absolutely nothing. I was 30 years old. I was bankrupt and I was depressed and I was divorced and I was broke. And I was literally living on a friend's floor. I was almost homeless. And so that second chapter uh, was, was really, really rough chapter. But along that, you know, they say that your, your mess can become your message, right? And like yeah. you said, your greatness is in, uh, I don't know if you said your struggle. Brokenness. In your brokenness, yeah. Right. So, so your greatness is in your brokenness. And so I started to identify and see the mistakes that I had made. And instead of blaming the world for my circumstances, I started to take responsibility for the bad choices I made Mm -hmm. that had led me into that horrible place in life and just make new choices. And so this last 15 years has been totally different. Um, You know, I've got a a wonderful wife, been married for 15 years now, three beautiful kids, a thriving business, amazing friends that I can trust and count on and depend on and just a a great relationship with the Lord. And so, you know, it's just, I I love to meet people in that brokenness and give them hope because I've been there and I can remember like it was yesterday, how that felt being there. And and so just to let people know that, Hey, there is hope and that, you know, that your past does not have to equal your future and just kind of a guide. So, so the book for me was just, uh, it's a lot of the story of my life, a lot of the things that I've learned. And I started off just wanting to, leave something behind for my children because I I talk to so many people and I ask them, you know, what did, what legacy did your parents leave you with? Or what, what were some of the best things they taught you? And there's, I get a lot of these uh, blank stares, you know, and and I (laughs) I just want to, I want to stand for something and I want my kids, my three kids to know what I stand for. So I started writing this book more for them, just, just a kind of like some highlights and some things I learned across life. But then I realized that this wasn't just for my kids. This was for all the broken people in the world. This is for all the people who need hope, who want to grow and who want to stretch themselves and get out of their comfort zone. And, and, and I've, I'm getting really good feedback from it. I've gotten it into probably a couple hundred people's hands so far that have read it and let me know how, what they thought about it. I'm excited to get you. It is really, Oh, I'm looking forward to it because I, I love the positive language that you use. And I love even when I saw the just do it, You know, and you know what I loved? The concept where you said, um, finding happy is like climbing a mountain and I can be, I'd like to be your tour guide. Amazing. I I just, I just love it. Why did you call it finding happy? When I started the podcast and I called it finding happy, person started saying to me, finding happy, like why finding happy? (laughs) You know, it's not something that you find, but it is something I believe you have to unearth. Why did you choose that title? Well, I think for me, one of the things is I, I think that, you know, as human beings, we disagree on a lot of things. You know, we have different uh, political beliefs, different uh, yeah. spiritual beliefs, different philosophies, all these kinds of things. But one of the things I think everybody can agree on is that we all want to be happy. I've never met anybody that says, no, I want to be miserable. You know, right? Everybody, yes. everybody I've met wants to be happy, and, but most people aren't. And that's just the simple, the simple mm-hmm. truth is that most people aren't happy, but they want to be happy. So right. how do you become happy? You know, and I think this, there's a pursuit involved. You have to, you have to discover what it is. So, and that was a pursuit and a journey that I went on. And now looking back, I see 
that I was chasing the wrong things. I see that I thought happiness was here or here or here, yeah. but I would get there and it was still just emptiness. It wasn't happiness. It was emptiness. Yeah. And so I had to discover uh, the things that, that, that brought happiness into my life and I believe bring happiness into anyone's life. And so, you know, the, the 10, that's kind of where I came up with the 10 keys to living an extraordinary life. And I didn't want to just make the 10 keys like the chapter titles because, you know, just read the chapter titles. I wanted to have them kind of hidden within the pages. Mm -hmm. So someone has to read through the book and uncover, you know, these, and then then come to their own uh, belief, whether that's, that's what's going to bring them happiness or not. But I know it has for me and I know it has for so many others Mm -hmm. as I, as I, uh, had do relationships with other people who are truly genuinely happy and have yeah. joy in their life. I, I see that yeah. the things that have brought me joy and happiness have brought everyone else joy and happiness too. So I know that these are uh, a lot of these are timeless truths yes. and it's, just, uh, it's, it's interesting though, because you have to find them. It's not like you're, I love it. We're given these uh, instruction manuals, you know, for our cell phone and for our, for, I know, right. We our didn't our ourselves. Phone, right? And then it's like, okay, uh, where's the manual on how to be a good, parent where's the yes. manual on how to be a good spouse where's the manual on how to be a, a good leader a good mm-hmm. a, a good friend and we just don't have those manuals and so right. I wanted to kind of encompass all that idea yes. um, under the, the the overarching theme that if you take this journey and you go down this path you will have joy and peace and happiness yes if you will just change everything will change for you that's a quote from your book yeah. So, so powerful. How does one, let me go to the topic for today, cultivating a relationship with yourself. I feel when I read, and I haven't read the entire book, but from what I've read so far, I feel like you were cultivating a relationship with yourself and empowering yourself to have strong, healthy relationships with others in everything you do. That's what I got from it. How how does one cultivate a strong, healthy relationship with themselves? And is that even important? Because so I think sometimes we're so focused on having a relationship with everybody else. But like I usually say to my clients that I'm coaching, like how often do you get up and say, hi, Raquel, what are you doing today? I don't do that unless I make, I make it intentional to learn. Some of us, even when we eat something that we like, we just happen to eat it and we like it, so we eat some more. It's not like we get a chance to understand who am I? What do I like? What, what inspires me? What excites me? So as I saw this, this, if you will just change, and I just love how you wrote it. The just is perfect. Like it had to be there. You know, if you will just change everything, you uh, will change for you. Why did you write that quote? And could you connect it back to the cultivating or understanding self? Yeah. So I think the key word that you said is the word intentional. Yes. And we have to be intentional to grow. Otherwise we can all survive in what I call drift mode and and drift mode is just do the minimum, you know, to survive food, water, shelter, survive and drift. But if we want to grow, we have to be intentional. And when you think about it, you know, when we, when we go through school and we're in first grade, second grade, third grade, we have this expectation that we will, uh, finish that year in one year, right? <laughs> I mean, they, they don't say, hey, we like him. Let's keep him two or three more years, right? You, you're expected to go through. But the majority of people, when they're done with school, they're done with learning. Yes. The two things that help us change the most are the books we read and the relationships that we have. And so we have to be very intentional about who is speaking into our life. Are they calling us up to a higher place yes. or are they not? And, you know, I, I, there's this, this whole piece on... Uh, destiny and calling you know i think we all have a specific calling in our life but we have to we have to be intentional about discovering what that is we all have gifts and talents and things that they're specific in to us um but we have to know what those are and we have to know why they're why we were given those and how we're supposed to use those and in that place of walking in our destiny and walking in our calling is where we're going to be happy And we're going to have peace. And so if you will change, everything will change for you is just a lot of times, most people live a life of blame instead of a life of taking responsibility. Yes. And they say, if my spouse would change, or if the government would change, or if my employer would change, or if my friends would change, or if my negative relatives, if my life would change, if your life would change, you'd probably be dead. (laughs) Yeah. So all these other things would adjust. Yes. Would change all this then I could, I could change. 
And so, you, you know, if you ask someone, hey, just make a list of all the problems in your life, they list all these outside things. And, that, and yeah. they don't realize the true source of the problem is always you and I because yes. we have to be willing to change. We have to be willing to change our attitude, how we see the world, and we can change our circumstances. And then that's when our life begins to change. So that was such a huge aha moment for me yeah. when I learned that, that I could go to work on myself because I can't control my my spouse. Yeah. And I can't really control my kids all the time. I can't control these other things, but I can control how I grow and how mm-hmm. I change and how I spend my time and what I listen to. So that's, that's what was behind that. Well, it's so funny because Tony Robbins, he, he says, if you're good, whatever you blame for your sorrows, you're going to have to blame them for your success. <laughs> so if you have to be willing to say, if this is why you're failing, when you succeed, you're going to have to say, this is why I succeeded. So you can't take the success as your own um, initiative, but the failure is not yours. What is your perspective on failure? I've been going through understanding and appreciating failure and embracing failure. What's yes, your perspective definitely. on it? Well, a couple things. Um, one, one of my favorite quotes on this is by Dennis Waitley. And he, he used to train Olympic athletes on um, mindset. And so he says, Failure is the fertilizer of success. Wow, I like that. And that says so much because fertilizer is, you know, stinky, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's necessary. It's necessary. If you're, if you're a farmer and you're cultivating your field, you have to fertilize your field because it's going to help everything grow. So you have Absolutely. to get stinky and it gets messy. And a lot of people try and avoid failure because they don't want to feel rejection. Yes. And it's kind of just the, the mentality that we're raised with is to, you know, to not be rejected, not to fail. But when you embrace failure, there's a lot of books on failing forward and doubling your rate of failure so you'll be successful. Mm-hmm. And when you look behind like success in a monetary form, a lot of the, the wealthiest people in the world, they didn't just have success, success, success. They would build a business and, and you find out later they lost millions on that business and they do right. something else and lose millions. So but failure is the fertilizer of success. So to have true success, you have to have failure also. And, it's just it. and even just to appreciate the success, mm-hmm. you need the failure. You said, whoever said um, you should not get your hopes up, be sure to get your hopes up. That's a quote from your book. Mm-hmm. Why? Oh, I love that because I love it too. I've heard that before, you know, when, when yeah. I was younger, just don't get your hopes up. Yeah, that's what they keep telling you, like, don't get your hopes up. Like, don't have too much expectations. Yeah, because you might <laughs> be let down, right? Right. Or, or things like what you don't know won't hurt you. Won't hurt. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and, and I, I mean, what I don't know is, was hurting me really bad. I didn't, yes. I didn't know this or I didn't know that. It was holding me back in life. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, it's just, it's just the, the way of the world is right. to say things like don't get your hopes up because if you get your hopes up you can be let down but i think you know one of the keys i put in the in the book and my wife always talks about this is that you have to dream big you know you have to dream so big that god has to come in and move on your behalf that's how he gets all the credit because yeah. he comes in and, and and you have this dream but he comes in and and you know you can't do it in your own strength right. so when god comes in and helps you succeed you you have to give him credit because you know that he's the one so i think we all need to always get our hopes up and dream big yes. and i like the part where i think you said continue to dream big or something it was in the continuous tense which i think was really insightful because sometimes we think we should just dream big once and that's it <laughs> that one big dream big but it's a consistent continuous expanding and expansion ex- evolving of self right yes. you yes. spoke about um resilience and adaptation which i think those are they're such powerful words and i've always thought about them i just never necessarily put them together like that mm-hmm. how does that apply to one's growth and advancement and finding of their happiness and joy and contentment in life well i think a big part of the philosophy between when you look at problems right? If you just change that word problem with the word challenge, you yeah. start to see it a whole different way. And, and what used to become such a big, huge, uh, you know, emotion cause you huge emotional distress over time, as you start to look at problems as challenges can just become like, Oh, that's not a big deal. Yeah. You know, when people come to me with the sky is falling, the world's falling, I ask things like, well, how many people just died? Because if no one died, then it's really no problem. We can <laughs> right. figure it out. We can get through it. The things that we get so anxious or stressed out 
or bother us so much today, oftentimes a week later, we can't even remember what those things were. Sure. So I think our, our emotions have to learn to go to school. We have to learn to uh, discipline our disappointment, develop a high grit cue, a, a higher emotional IQ. And all that just helps us to live a better life because then the, the little cares of the world can't take us out so easily and, and cause distraction and cause depression. And, and so I think it's a lot of it is just looking at the big picture. Sometimes we got to get out of our circumstances like and look at the 30,000 foot view and say, okay, I'm in the storm right now, but instead of worrying so much about the storm, what is the lesson that I'm supposed to be learning within the storm? And not freak out that we're in the storm, but understand there's a lesson there. And later on, we'll look back and, you know, they say hindsight is always 2020. So we'll be able to look back later and go, wow. And then over time, when we start to do this, we get less caught up with the circumstances and the problems and everything when we're in the moment and we're able to look at it through a, a fresh set of eyes. Right. And just so that um, the persons who are listening understand that you're not just saying this because you're a pastor, but you've actually gone through it. I, rem uh, I saw where in the book you spoke about being suicidal when you went to into the military and being pushed beyond your limits. Could you just kind of connect who you are now with where you're coming from? Definitely. So I was just thinking about that recently. I remember, you know, before I went into the military, this is one example. If it started raining, uh, I would be like everyone else. And I just run to try and get out of the rain, right? I don't want to get wet. I'm going to run and stay dry. But in the military, you're pushed physically and you're pushed in so many different ways, you know, and you get used to just being drenched and freezing and cold and all that so many times where if, if I'm in a Walmart parking lot now and it starts to sprinkle a little bit, I'm, I'm not too worried about it. You know, so things that used to worry me so much before don't bother me at all now. And I think what I learned from the military is, is, is we can be stretched so much physically. You know, you, someone can go in the military and only do 10 push-ups, or, or I think you have to do like 42 to get in. Um, but then within a few months, that same person could be doing double. They could be doing 80, 85. So if we can stretch ourselves and change that much in a physical sense, we can also stretch our minds and change our minds in a mental sense. And, you know, and the biggest problem typically is those eight inches between our ears because it's what, it's what we're thinking about and our thoughts, you know, thoughts become things. There's a verse in the Bible that says, as a man thinketh, so he is. And so we have to train ourselves to, to see the world differently and just understand the potential that is out there and available and start having an optimal, you know, some people just believe I'm just a negative person. I'm just a pessimistic person or that someone else is just an optimistic person. Well, though we can, we can change, you know, we're not a duck. We don't have to fly South for the winter or a bird. You know, we don't have to fly South. Right. for the winter. We can decide today. I'm going to start looking at the world differently. And a lot of that is just, we have to put, we have to watch what we put in our minds. You know, I, I would never let my neighbor and you would let your neighbor just come and dump their garbage. <laughs> Exactly. every day right dump your garbage dump your garbage but a lot of times we allow people to dump garbage into our heads and yes. so we have to we have to uh, watch what we're listening to and who has our ear yeah how does this shape your role as a pastor um i when i when i'm talking to you now in my in my head you don't even sound like a typical pastor to me and i i love it because for me I feel like when I go to church, these are the conversations I want to hear. How do I become better? How do I, how, do, how, how does it sh um, shape your sermon, your, your ministry? Well, you know, it's, it's interesting that you, you, that you keep saying pastor because it's kind of funny to me because oh, in, in my 45 years of life, I've never been a pastor. I, I was ordained this year. Oh. Um, and I, so I, I was ordained this year because I did oh. my first wedding and I did my first memorial service. Oh. But my okay. wife and I have always, for the last, you know, six years, we've done marketplace ministry. So we okay. led a lot of people to the Lord, but I've never had a position and we've been a worship a, and stuff, okay. but I've never had a position with a church. Oh, as a okay. Because it's not a pastoral thing. <laughs> yeah. But I, I like, I like the, I like to use the word covert evangelism because I, oh, I do a like music group every year and we bring guys in to talk business and we end up baptizing guys in the pond, you know, and guys get saved every year. Yeah. So we do a lot of ministry stuff, but yeah, I've never had the, official title, you know, within, okay. a, within a church as pastor, but, okay. but I love, I love the Lord and I love, you know, sharing what he's done for me and what he's done for so many others. And 
it, we, it just seems like my wife and I just have people constantly coming into our lives that are curious and they're ready yeah. and able to uh, share that with them. So a lot of the stuff in my book, um, you know, you'll see that, um, you'll see ministry just sprinkled all throughout and just the biblical mm -hmm. truths that I believe mm -hmm. uh, that have helped me with not just having happiness in my life, but, yes. you know, upgraded happiness, which is, which is joy. Oh, I like that. Tell us about that. I love that upgraded happiness. Wow. I like that. Yeah. Well, the, the peace, you know, the, the peace of the Lord that surpasses all mm -hmm. understanding. And if you don't have it, you can't understand it. And I, I, I witnessed this growing up as a kid because I had, you know, we would have family reunions around Christmas, Easter, whatever. And I always had this one aunt and she was always so happy. And I thought there's no way she can be happy all the time. I thought she has to be fake. I didn't know anybody like her that was really, truly happy. But as I got older, I began to realize more and more it was the peace of the Lord in her life. And I didn't get it. I didn't understand it because I didn't have a relationship, you know, with right. God. And so as I started to develop that relationship and I started to really understand the word and dig into the word, I started to understand more, you know, like the uh, Philippians four, six and seven, you know, that just talks about the peace. Do not be anxious about anything. Oh, that's my verse. Everything. <laughs> prayer and petition with thanksgiving yes. present your request to God and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. and, and that might as well be Japanese, you know, unless you have a relationship with the Lord, you begin to understand <laughs> that. And then when you run across a situation that should, would cause any average person stress or anxiety, you remember that, that verse and you have that peace that just takes okay. over and, and you can't, exp it's unexplainable. It and so that's a part, that's been a part of my journey and it's been a part of, uh, you know, so many people that I know and, and how they're able to have peace that surpasses all understanding. And so I just think of happiness. I think of joy. Yes. You know, happiness a lot of times is so circumstantial. I'm happy mm -hmm. because this happened. I'm unhappy because this happened, but joy is just steady. It's yes. constant. Yes, it is. What would you say to someone who is listening, who is, is, thinking how, based on where I am, I want to be happy, I want to find joy, but how do I transition? How do I get past my, my negative blocks? How do I get past there to get to finding myself and my joy and my peace? What would you well, say? You know, there, there's a, a lot of parts to that and there's a lot of steps to that, but ultimately what it boils down to is if you will change, everything will change for you. I, I love that quote so much. And I, I love that you put, if you would just change. Mm -hmm. I love it. How, how, does one, how does one change? Well, you have to start doing things you've never done and you have to stop mm -hmm. doing things you've always done. You've always, yes. And that's, that's just what it really boils down to. You have to, you have to mm -hmm. make some changes. And there's, there's, a, you know, there's a process there for sure. Um, cause otherwise, you know, we'll, we'll come, we'll circle that mountain and we'll end up, we'll, we'll do good for a while. And then we'll, we'll go back because all things unchecked re resort or revert to form, which mm -hmm. basically just means, you know, your default mode. If you're not being intentional every day about growing, then you're just kind of staying where you've been, you know, and the definition, my, one of my favorite definitions of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over and over <laughs> again. All. Yeah. One of the parts in, in the book, I talk about um, wherever you go, there you are. A wow. Lot people, I like yeah, that. Yeah. I think so many people feel like if they can get a new start, if I can just get a new relationship, then it'll be better. If I can just get a move to a new city, it'll be better. If I can do this. And, and it's kind of like this, this starting over, but yeah. it, it, it well, lasts, the mindset it's, hasn't it's, changed. Yeah. The mindset hasn't changed. So right. you find yourself in the same relationship. You find yourself with the same problems you know, the, the same negative people coming into your life. And it's, it's not so much about everything out there, it's internally. And right. so it always boils down to we have to look inside, do a checkup from the neck up and say. I like that. <laughs> I, I do a checkup from the neck up. I like yeah. that. And yes. great, and what's, great about, what's great about God is I realize this through prayer. It's almost like he'll let you see one thing at a time. I mean, could you imagine if, if God showed us the full, the full body mirror and he said, Hey, here's the 75 things I see in you, the blind spots that you need to change. No, he'll bring one thing at a time to your attention. So it's a constant process of growth. You know, John, John Wooden, who was a, 
amazing basketball coach and just has some of the best quotes ever. And he was coach of the century. So out of a hundred years, you know, they called him the number one coach. Wow. He says, it's what you learn after you know it all that makes the biggest difference. Wow. And That's thought, profound. How is that? Yeah. My 14 year old, you know, he's 14 and he thinks he knows it all. I have to constantly remind him, Hey, you, you don't, you, you know a lot for 14, but you don't know it all. There's a lot more to learn. And the more I learn, the more I know that I need to learn. And yes. it's a constant journey of growth and a constant journey of change. And that's where all good things come from Yes, is from that. You know, it's called labor pains, you know, mm -hmm. to, to create new life, yes. you have to go through labor and yeah. you have to go, through, you have to grow. And, you know, they call them growing pains. Kids are growing up, their legs start hurting. And so there's some, there, there's a, this part of it being uncomfortable, that growth can be uncomfortable which is why a lot of people stop growing because they don't like how the uncomfortable feels, but that all goes into the failure being the fertilizer of success. And we have to grow and we have to have some pain and we have to have some discipline. You know, my, uh, my favorite verse on discipline is Hebrews 12, 11, And it says, no discipline is pleasant, but painful. So most people are out right there. You know, I don't yeah. want to, why would I choose to do something that's painful? Right. So yeah. no discipline is pleasant, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of peace and righteousness for those who have been trained by it. So that's all I needed to hear to know that I need to be disciplined in my life. Because through that discipline, what discipline in one area of life leads to a discipline in another area of life. And then it just helps us to move forward and helps us to change and helps us to grow. Yes. Why should someone get your book? Well, I think they should get it because they are going, I mean, I think uh, on my website right now, and it goes live on Amazon and in Barnes and Nobles on January 1st. So I'm excited nice. about that. Congratulations. Right now through, uh, findinghappybook.com can mm -hmm. go there. And I think there's a lot of value. And out of the 10 keys, even if someone just took one or two and mm -hmm. implemented those one or two things into their life, they're going to see breakthrough. They're going to see growth. They're going to see increased happiness. And so I just know that, that and I, I have a lot of uh, stories that I share in the book and just real life examples of, of how it's mm -hmm. helped, you know, myself and my wife and I. And so, I mean, the value of, of this book is, I believe, well beyond, you know, the, the $20 that it costs to purchase yes. it. Yes. So, I think it's a good book for young people. Um, who was your target audience when you wrote it? Well, initially it was, it was for... Um, my children and that's ah, yes, yes, anybody anybody who's depressed yes you know, just needs needs something it needs a guide needs a coach to help them get out of that place it's going to help them um, anybody who's dealing with PTSD or, or any traumatic experience mm -hmm. in life you know, I shared in there I had a younger brother who committed suicide so yes. uh, going through that's been difficult or, or, or being in war and I have a lot of friends who have had to deal with uh, friends and loved ones dying, you know, in battle and that sort of stuff. So that's, it's going to help them. Anybody who wants to be a leader in business or in ministry, it's going to help them out. Um, so those are, those are some of the, the key groups, I think, but here's, yes. I love this oh, is the picture finding happy. of the book, the keys to living an extraordinary life. It's awesome. I, 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 I wish when I was younger, I wish I had books like I, I wasn't aware that I could pick up books like these. I was so stuck on my my school books, the sciences, the math, the English. But how do, important do you think it is to have books like these as um, a part of reading catalog for young people so they can understand from early the thing that thoughts are things thoughts are real how to really cultivate the kind of mindset for success we we cultivate the mindset for education but i think we miss out on cultivating a mindset for for a happy meaningful joyful life mm -hmm. how do you think a book having books like these or having them have access to books like these could help well in, inspirational books and person personal development books yes are huge it's it's been a game changer for me because um, typically the education system is going to give us reading writing and arithmetic it's going <laughs> to give us the, the basics to get through life it's going to yes. tap out the checkbook and get through life but people who have dedicated their lives to a topic have written books about it yes. you know people who have come from nothing and and built something substantial have written books about it. i know um 
you know, when I was, when I first started learning about this, like, like a couple of the books that I read for, that got really opened up my hunger and made me want to learn more and keep going and keep going were things like, um, how to win friends and influence people. Uh, yeah. you know, I love that. When I first learned that the 21 irrefutable laws of leadership and John Maxwell, who now has yes. written over a hundred books on leadership, leadership right? And reading that or someone who dedicated 20 years of their life to studying the most successful people in the world and wrote a book called think and grow rich. Yes. You know, or Robert Kiyosaki, who has some amazing books out there. Rich dad, poor dad was one of his first popular books. Uh, Jim Rohn, who's one of my favorite philosophers that's, that's ever lived. So going and, and reading these books, you know, and again, to go back to the things that are going to change us the most are the books we read and the relationships we have. Yeah. You know, you might, you might be a parent and you're in, you're in Walmart and your three kids are screaming and throwing fits and, you know, tantrums. And then you, you walk by and you see this person that's has five kids and they're so polite and pleasant and they have their hands on the cart and they're obeying. And you just look and go, I want my kids to be like that. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. what was that? You, you could probably, you know, and John Maxwell still to this day, every single month, he, he invites, he pays for someone's lunch and he sits down and he just asks questions and takes notes wow. because he finds someone who specializes in whatever area. So if, if, if someone sees that mom in Walmart and you say, Hey, your kids are amazing. Could I right. have you lunch sometime and just pick your right. brain? You're probably going to sit down with that woman and she's going to say, Oh, well, my grandma taught me this. Right. And I used it or I read this book. My kids used to be horrible and I did, I implemented this in my life and this in my life. So that's how we learn. And so, it's simple things, isn't it? It's simple decisions. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a simple, it's a simple choices that we make. What would you, what, what advice would you give to somebody who, you know, sometimes you have these situations where persons feel as though something happened to me. I didn't directly choose. For example, say, let's say somebody told a lie on you, a huge lie that changes your life. And you can't see that as some as, as a bad choice you've made, but I believe that there are choices you made that led to your being connected with something that could have happened. Um, how do you help someone who cannot see how they may have contributed to where they are? Well, one thing I think is is what we focus on grows. So if we focus on the negative thing or the negative situation that happened in our life, we're, we're literally inviting more negative things and more negative situations to happen in our life. So grow from our past and learn from our past and let that be a, a school teacher for us. But we have to, what I do when I talk to people and they're, and they're negative or they're like this, 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 this happened. Okay, well, let's talk about that for a little bit. Let's focus on what do you want and where do you want to go? And how are you going to get there? See, that has very, very little to do with what's happened to us, you know, when we look backwards. Mm -hmm. And if we spend time, and, and that could be done in a, in a positive or a negative sense. I mean, think about like professional athletes. If you're a professional athlete and you have a, let's say football, and you're a professional athlete and you play football for five or six years, and now you're out of football, you, you could very easily say, my life, the best part of my life is over. Because you look back and you go, those are the glory days. Those are the good days. And, the, and you can spend the rest of your life under that label of that's who I am. That's who I was. That part of my life's over now. It's never going to get better. Or you can look to the future and you can say, what's next? What am I supposed to be doing next? Where am I supposed to go? My calling destiny. So a lot of times that very situation that happened, because I don't think, I don't think God wastes any part of our story. So let's say something happened to you in the past where, where you were, um, where, where something, you know, tragic or something horrible happened, odds are that that's going to be used in your future. You're going to be able to, maybe, maybe you were in a deep depression because you had a spouse who passed away from cancer or something. Right. And so you didn't cause that. And that's something you had to go through. But as you recover from that, you know, as you know, we go back to that idea of post-traumatic growth, how can you yeah. grow? I mean, Joyce Meyer is a great example. You know, Joyce Meyer is a young girl. She was abused. She had to forgive her father, she had to move forward. But what that did is that gave her sympathy and empathy for other women who have been abused that have thousands have come into her life and she's been able to walk them through the healing process. And if that never would have happened, she never would have understood the healing process and be able to walk someone through. So, you know, anything is possible. Like my, my, uh, my wife was a high school dropout, you know, and now she's a, a wildly successful businesswoman. And so we can't, we can't just, let those, those self-imposed limitations. When things happen to us, a lot of times we say, 
now I could never do this. You know, I, I can never become this or become this or become this because of what happened to me in my past. And those are just chains that we weren't designed to bear. And we can get rid of those chains and fly and have freedom in our future and become more and do more and learn more. And so we're never out. We're never out of the game. I mean, anytime that we think we're out of the game, all we got to do is do a little bit of research and we'll find out someone with worse circumstances yes. was able to come back from that than us. Mm -hmm. And so I love, I love that we have those examples. And that's where a lot of those books are um, that we can pick up and read. That's just going to give us hope. You know, it's going to give us hope and that we can move forward. Yeah. Wonderful. Is there anything else in the book that you wanted to share um, or about it? Well, let me think. I just think there's a lot of, I'll give you, I'll give you one story. Cause I think by nature, I think most of us, when we grew up, we're, we're, we're tuned into the, what I call the W I I F M radio station. Uh, what's, what's in it for me? Oh, that's, yes. Our, our, yes. Because of our flesh, we have, we have a selfish nature. You know, it's, it's funny. People used to actually think that the sun uh, you know, the little, little sun revolved, revolved around, revolved around the earth. Cause we're like, yeah, we're here. Everything must revolve around us. Yeah. Right. And we learned that earth revolves around the sun. And so I've learned in my, in my relationship with God, that my life needs to revolve around the sun, you know, Jesus wow. Christ. And so the more that I'm in tune with that, the more that I realize that, uh, the, the easier, the easier life is, you know, the, the more joy I have in life. And so I'll share one story. And this, this is one of the, one of the keys um, that I put in the book is that it's far better to give than to receive. Yes. Like we, we ultimately, and I know this because when I was young in my twenties, I wanted this and I wanted that and I wanted that. And I thought it would bring me happiness and I would get it. And I'd be like, okay, I, I'm a little bit happier, but not really, you know, how come what's wrong? I thought I'm supposed to go achieve and get and receive, right? Yes. Receive, receive. So I was in the army one day. And my wife called me up and she said, Hey, on the way home, will you pick me up some uh, chicken and I need some diapers? And I was like, okay. So this was probably at like 4.15. I hadn't left yet and I'm getting ready to go out the door and I get a call from my commander. Hey, I need to talk to you for a minute. And now 45 minutes later, I'm uh, finally going out the door. And as soon as I go out of the door, my phone starts vibrating in my pocket. And I know it's my, I know it's my wife. Hey, are you, are you almost here? And I just have to give her the bad news, right? And so I'm already irritated. And now it's raining outside. And I have about a five-minute walk to my car. Now, when you're in the military and you're in your uniform, you can't walk and talk on the phone. So if I was going to answer the phone, I would have to stand still and talk, which just means I'm going to get more wet. So I'm not answering my phone. And, and my wife's very persistent. She's like, I need to talk to him right now. So she's calling over and over and over. So by the time I get to my car, she's probably called me 10 times. And I finally get in the car and I answer and she's like, where are you? And I said, I haven't left. I'm, I'm just now getting to the car to leave. And of course she's hungry. And by now she called in this order. So the, 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 the fries are going to be soggy. The chicken's going to be getting cold, you know, and I'm irritated and she's irritated. So that's our state of mind as I drive and I go to, I go to Walgreens to get the diapers. So I pull up into Walgreens. I'm already in this frustrated mindset. And there's a guy kind of waiting by the door. You can tell he wants to ask people for something as they're walking in the door. And I see he's got his truck and he's got the hood lifted up in his truck. And I look over and I see he's got his wife sitting in the truck holding a little puppy. And he's standing outside in the rain, like waiting for people to come into the store. And so I know he's going to ask me for something. I walk up and he says, hey, uh, could you help me out? Um, my, my radiator went out of my truck and I need to get it fixed. And a guy came by and said for $160, you know, I could get it fixed. And my wife and I are just trying to get the truck fixed so we can continue on our journey to where we're going. And I'm like, get in here and grab some stuff and I'll, I'll give you some money on the way out. So I go in and I find the diapers and, and I've actually forgotten that I told him I'd help him out. So I come out and I didn't get any extra money or anything. And he, he's waiting for me. And I see him and I go, oh, come with me to the car. Cause I'm thinking maybe I've got a few dollars in the car. Right. Mm -hmm. So I go to the car and I, I've got just, a few, you know, like 50 cents and change or something. And I'm like, I'm not just going to give this guy 50 cents. He needs $160. So let me go back in the store and buy a pack of gum and get $20 cash back or, or you know, give him a little bit. And so I go in the store and I see there's an ATM machine there. And I go, you know what? I'm going to go to the ATM machine. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, $40, 
I'm like, okay, I'll give him half. I'll give him $80. And as clear as day, I heard a voice in my head that says, when you pray to me, do you want me just to answer your prayers halfway? And I thought, no, sir. So I knew that was my clue to, to get the full 160. And I didn't want to, but I was, I was being obedient. So I, I got $160 out of the ATM machine. I'm still irritated. I'm like, I'm star. I'm hungry. But now I'm hangry, right? You know, when you're hungry and you're angry, I'm hangry. And so I go and I, I give the guy $160 and he just looks at it and he, he says, how can I repay you? And gives me a hug. And I'm like, you know, just get your truck fixed and, you know, God bless you, you and your wife. Um, God's definitely looking out for you, right? Yes. And I go to my car and by now the, uh, the woman uh, that was in the car comes running over because she'd realized that I'd given them the full amount and she has her puppy in her arms and she comes over and, and, and I roll down the window and, you know, it's raining outside and she reaches in and gives me a big hug and has tears in her eyes. And I'm like, uh -huh. I'm like, Oh, you know, you're welcome. No big deal. And so I'm still kind of like irritated about the whole situation, but here's the key. Here's, here's what I want everyone to get. Let's listen to this. As I drove away, I looked in the rearview mirror and I saw the husband and wife, the wife's holding the dog and her other arms around her husband and he's got one arm around her and he's got the 160 and he's holding it in the air wow. and they're jumping up and down and they're spinning in circles, dancing in the rain. Wow. And when I saw that in my rear view mirror, I immediately, all my anger, all my frustration, everything melted away. The 160 didn't matter. The joy and the peace and the happiness that I felt in that moment was it, there, no money, no amount of money could ever buy that. No thing I could ever get would make me feel that way. And so as I was, as I was driving away, I thought to myself, wow, that was cool. And then later I, I heard this verse and I don't remember the exact verse, but basically it said, it, it talks about sometimes you and I may be entertaining angels unaware. Yeah. And so I thought to myself, was this a test that was put in my life just to see if God could trust me to be obedient with finances? And, you know, of course I got home and, and my wife, She's always been even more of a giver, giver than me. She's like, how come you didn't give them more? They probably needed some money for gas. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, and wow. So within minutes, you know, we were just, we were just celebrating. Wow. And since that moment, we've had just financial blessing has just poured into our life. It's unexplainable. It can only be explained that we are open. Every time we have finances, we get, we put it in front of God. We say, what do you want us to do with these? Is there something, a person you want us to bless? Is there something we need to sow into? And our, we have not had any financial challenges since then and just the overflow in our wow. finances. And so that. The power of giving. Me, the power of giving. And so now I believe that it's always better to give and to receive. Than and to I receive. so much joy in giving to yeah. others. It's, it's great. You know, during Christmas. I'll unwrap some presents and I'll get some stuff and I'll be like, yeah, I got that. But what I get the joy out of is watching my kids and what do they receive and giving to other people. So that, and it's so backwards because what we feel like and what we think normally is that if we get this or get this or get that or achieve that, we'll be happy. But no, it's more happiness is gotten in through giving things away. So that's one of the 10 keys. Yes. And, uh, you know, I, uh, I think the 10, the 10 keys that we put in here are, just as good as that one. And yes. so anyone who buys the book is going to have access to those, all those different keys. But uh, that's, it's, it's, uh, these are things that have changed my life completely and helped me to have happiness and joy. And I think they will for anybody else too. So that's the, that's the, the I guess the one story I just wanted to throw out there and share. Yes. That was a yes. game. And I'm so thankful that you did share it. It's amazing. Could you please tell us where we can get your book? Um, I know it's going to be on Amazon January one, right? Mm -hmm. and, and you have the, the website, findinghappy.com, findinghappybook.com. Findinghappybook.com. So people yes. can go to findinghappybook.com and buy the book uh, right. directly from me. And if they buy it from me, um, then I've, I've been signed. Most of the ones that come to, straight to my website, I'll put a little, you know, thank you and, and sign oh, the book. Okay. So that's, uh, if, they, if they prefer to go to Amazon, Amazon's yes. doing pre-orders now. So some, someone can go to Amazon and buy the book right now. Um, and January 1st, it'll be available in Barnes and Nobles. And I think that's up to, it's also available on Kindle currently on Nook, um, on I, iBooks. And then I should be going into the studio this month to do an audio book. Oh, lovely. That's nice. Yeah. And you're going to be doing it yourself. Yes. I'll be reading it. Lovely. And, um, 
yeah, and, and doing yeah. the audio book. So I know oh, I've got that request from a lot of people to do the to do the audio. So yes. I just want to say thank you though to you. I can tell <laughs> just by the messaging back and forth and your smile. Yeah. <laughs> and you, uh, are you you figured it out? You know, you're you're a happy person, a joyful yeah. person. So I look forward to all the content, everything that you have, and yeah. and sharing that with with people that I know. And I just want to thank you for inviting me on here and having me on here. And I know you get what all these things that I'm talking about. So. I do. And I just want to say thank you so much. You are one of the first persons that I invite on. And you don't ask me about how many likes, how many clicks. And I, I have nothing against the persons who do, if that's what drives them. But it told me something about you, you know, that you just want to impact. Because for me, and you are correct, I am happy now. I, I finally found that peace that you feel on the inside going down inside of you but growing up it's like you're taught that you're supposed to collect these things it, it, it's, it's almost like it's drummed in you collect 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 but those collections never make you happy for me it created more void because the more i had and the more need i saw the more guilty i felt that i had but once you start opening up yourself to other people you, and, and start embracing persons like we've worked with, like the homeless and things like that. And like you said, with that, that, that family that had that, that couple, when you look in your rear view mirror and you see that that's how I feel when, when you do something really awesome and someone is happy. There's nothing I love more than doing something that makes other people smile and happy. Um, and that's why I do coaching. I'm a strategist. I love to help people strategize to win. And so when I saw your book, knowing that I'm writing one too on it, um, I was like, wow, this is amazing. And the topic you chose, because I've gotten so many questions about that topic. I was just, I was just amazed by it. It, it, it excited me. And when I read the book and, and thank you so much for offering me a copy. That is amazing. Please get this book because it is if you will just change, everything will change for you. I think that is so powerful. It's so profound. And things I'd be sure to get your hopes up. Um, on the post-traumatic growth, I mean, that's something I'm going to be using. I'm going to be hashtagging because I, I love it. it. It's changing the negative into positive. So persons can understand that anything that sounds bad or negative, there's a flip side to it. And so I just want to thank you so much, so deeply for allowing me to have this conversation with you. Well, I've, I've really, really enjoyed it. And I've done awesome. quite a few podcasts lately. And, yes. and, and, you know, there's just, you have that, you have that, spe you have that. <laughs> the way the Lord is in you. And so yes. I'm, sure, I'm sure you're doing great things all yes. the time to yes. empower people and help people. So, you know, I, I had a, a guy one time that told me this and it really just, it was one of those ideas that just took root yes. and, and it's, it's just grown over time. But he said, if, if I was ever going to get a tattoo, I should have these words tattooed on the inside of my eyelids. So every time I closed my eyes, I would see them. <laughs> and I thought, wow, that's okay. He's pretty serious about this, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm never, I'm not going to do. I don't recommend having any words tattooed on the inside. Of Cause once you close your eyes, they won't see it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. But he said, God loves you. Wow. He wants what's best for you. He does. And you can trust him. Mm. And those are the words I needed to hear at the time. And I think those are the words that today so many people need to hear. And in the pursuit and in the journey of figuring that out, you know, what does that, what does love, what does God loves me mean? And understanding that. And then understanding that he wants what's best for us, which sometimes means he's going to take us, he's going to take us away from what we think we want, need, or we think we want. And that can be hard to figure out sometimes in the moment. Although looking back, we understand like in my, in my book, I share, I wanted to be a rock and roll singer and I was doing everything in my strength to be a rock and roll singer and follow that journey. And he saved me from myself by taking me off course yeah. and taking me another direction. So he wants what's best for us and we can trust him. I think yes. some people get to a point in life where they feel like they can't trust anybody. And I can trust God though. When I trust God, I can trust that he's putting the right woman in my life as my wife. I can trust that he's bringing the right friendships into my life. And even if I get 
um, betrayed by somebody, I can trust him that he's going to move me forward. I mean, even Jesus had the 12 disciples, right? And Judas yeah. betrayed him. So, <laughs> right. you know, I, I would rather uh, trust people and get betrayed once in a while by a yeah. person than have no lo love and no relationships and no close friends, right? right. And so there's just so much of that to, to unravel. And it's a process. And, and again, that's why I think it's important for each person to understand that life is a journey. Right. And it's a process and we should, we're, we're designed to enjoy life, not just endure life and, and get right. to the end and go, I made it to the bitter <laughs> end. You know, we, we need to enjoy our life. And yes. the more that we connect with people, the more that we connect with who God is, the more we're going to enjoy our lives. So, uh, I get to see just through all this stuff. I get to yes. meet you. Yeah. Right. By being a right. Dude, now I get to meet you and who knows? <laughs> Who knows what will happen with this relationship? Uh, I know, right? We never know where it can go. Yeah. Powerful, powerful stuff. Thank you so much. I'm, thank you so much. Well, thank and you. I wish you a fantastic, phenomenal rest of day and week. That conversation with Chad Kenneller was very inspiring and very empowering. <laughs> empowering. Um, if you're listening to me right now, it means I was meant to speak to you today. And the reason I know is because... The fact that I was supposed to publish my book, Finding Happy, and I am delaying it, but Finding Happy is here because this is the book I was supposed to, I was meant to introduce you to. It wasn't my book. My book is not, it's not right now. It's not ready. It wasn't for this month. The book that I was supposed to introduce you to with the very same title, Finding Happy, is the Finding Happy book by Chad Kenneller. Search for the name. C-H-A-D-K-N-E-L-L-E-R. You can go to findinghappybook.com. If you can hear the sound of my voice and you're listening to this podcast, this message is for you. I know it is for you because I've been talking about um, publishing Finding Happy in December and I'm personally just not ready to put my story out there. And here I am being given the opportunity to introduce you to finding happy anyway. It's not by chance. I do not believe in coincidence. And so if you're listening to the sound of my voice, please visit this website, findinghappybook.com. It means I am meant to introduce you to this book. That's why you're hearing the sound of my voice right now. Please go and check it out. Please go and check it out. Be empowered. Be in inspired. Go inspire somebody. Go, go love yourself and go love somebody. Have a fantastic, phenomenal holiday. Make sure that this holiday finds you with great peace. In great peace. Be content. Have peace of mind. And be happy. Find your happy. Dare to live. Thank you for listening to Finding Happy Podcast. Yeah.